That's our word for the year. It's open doors and 24. Man, if that song doesn't get you jazzed up and ready to go, who is ready for miracle after miracle? Who needs a miracle? You know, someone around you who needs a miracle? It's a lot different when you stand up and sing these songs, when you're needing a miracle, when you're needing a door open, when you have a friend who's needing a miracle. Man, whoo, that song was so good. Thank you so much, Kristen. Incredible. Incredible. Well, good morning, Momentum Church. You guys are alive this morning, looking amazing. I'm so excited to be here in our Pensacola campus. I have been at um, the Navarre campus since December. I've seen you guys at different events we've had. God's doing big things at our Navarre campus, but it is a special treat to be here with you guys today here in Pensacola. Before we get started, I got to give a little shout out to the Navarre peeps because there's some rowdy raiders over there, okay? So I got to give a shout out to our Navarre campus. It is so good to have you this morning. Uh, you can't hear them, but I promise you, they're cheering. And then our Blackwater campus. God is doing incredible things at Blackwater campus. Tim probably mentioned this last week, but Easter Sunday, we have not been able to meet there. Um, a lot of Easter's and God opened the doors. I mean, standing room only, big things happen. So incredible. So it's good to have Blackwater joining us. And last, but definitely not least, our online campus. Give it up for our online campus. People watching around the world. And I know some people who are a little under the weather today that are watching as well this morning. Will you guys go ahead and have a seat? I promise I won't make you stand for another hour, unless you want to. If you want to stand, that's totally fine. But Man, we are in a marriage series, and it's perfect timing because this past Wednesday, Tim and I celebrated 25 years of marriage. I know. I feel like I need to clap for myself. I know Tim had to clap for himself, too. <laughs> Us loving each other, maybe not so good sometimes, but here we are 25 years later, and I love God's sense of humor sometimes. Um, he says the joy of the Lord is our strength, so I think he's got a great sense of humor. So Wednesday, do you remember what Wednesday was? The big, well, it's our anniversary, but it was also the storms, all the storms that came through. So we got away for a few days, and we're sitting there, and, you know, the storms are rolling in, the kids are there. And I'm like, and I, start, I looked at him, I just kind of chuckled. I said, isn't this funny? God, just a little reminder how far we've come in 25 years. Because this is pretty much, a re, you know, a representation of what our marriage looked like 25 years ago when we got started. All the storms rolling in, all the craziness, all the stuff that we were anticipating or even not anticipating happening. And I said, look how far God has brought us. Look what he's done. And it's just incredible for us to reflect over 25 years um, and I love being able to share some things with you this morning. And Tim and I don't come from a place of, man, we're perfect, get in line, we got it all figured out. But we have learned a few things the hard way. <laughs> we have learned things just through growing in the Lord and growing together of to how to make a marriage, even after 20 years, still be sweet, still love that person even more than you did the first day you married them. Um, this last week, Tim spoke on God's design, God's design of marriage. Design matters. We don't get to redefine what God designs. So he laid a great groundwork out for the marriage series that we have and that we're in currently. So if you have not had the opportunity to listen or you weren't I'm able to come last week, go back and do yourself a favor and listen. Tim did an incredible job of unpacking that God's design is best. Design matters. Well, today I have a fun one. We're going to be talking about communication. Who has communication all figured out? I mean, you're like, I'm a pro. I should probably get up there and speak for you right now. I'm a pro at this communication thing, especially when it comes to relationships and marriage. Well, this past um, week, I was gone last Sunday, so I wasn't able to be here. I had gone to St. Louis, and, you know, I fly a little bit, so I was not like a novice at this, so I normally have, you know, I have just a whole little thing that I do. You know, I wear a little fanny pack. Any fanny pack wearers out there or little belt bags? Yes, yes, you got to wear them. I, I resisted it for so long, then I'm like, okay, I have to be cool, and it has to be convenient, so here I go. So when I'm in the airport, I always wear it up front. And I keep all my, you know, important things in it, and then I wear a backpack. So, and when I beam my important things, like, you know, the essentials, my ID, my driver's license, I mean, my driver's license, my, you know, a credit card for emergencies, debit card, and all that, and just right here, so that way in case I need it. So I had had a great flight that landed in Nashville, had a several-hour layover, so I was able to grab a book, you know, and, you know, Southwest, any of y'all fly Southwest? 
So no one flies Southwest? I guess I'm alone. But <laughs> so with Southwest, you know, you don't really pick your seat. You know, you go in those little sections. Well, the first one I went on, um, I had a better selection, but it was a longer flight. So the second was 45 minutes. And I'm like, it doesn't matter, you know. I guess they didn't think so either. I was the last two people to board <laughs> the fully packed out plane, right? And so I may, you know, met friends with this lady. You know, we're like making friends over here. And we're like, well, I guess we're going to be stuck in the back by the bathrooms. You know, there's probably going to be only two seats left. Well, I come around the corner, and there on the front row, I mean, like, you walk, and there's front row is an empty seat. And I kind of look at him like, okay, did somebody throw up in here? Like, what's going, it's like the light shining down. Ah. So I, go, I was like, hey, is this seat taken? And they're like, no. I'm like, look at God's favor on my life. I mean, seriously, here I go, leg room. So I sit down, and I look at the flight attendant, and I say, hey, where, sh where should I put my bag? And she goes, oh, girl, that's why nobody sat there, because there's no place for your bag. That goes in the back of the plane. And I'm like, how am I going to get it after the flight? And she's like, and she just leaves and leaves me to, like, figure it all out on my own. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, what do I do? Like, what do I do with my bag? Where do I go? So the guy behind me says, I think there's room. Open that first bin, you know. So I'm like, you know, carefully opening up. There's like this much space. I'm like, really? You know, here I am with my backpack. And I still have my little fanny pack on. So we get my backpack. I and mean, I'm like trying to put it up there. Finally, I think he saw the sweat pouring off of me. He um, gets up and he's taller. So he moves it and we shove my bag in, shove other things around and then slam the door really quick. So we're like, whew, we'll figure that out when we get there. So we get there, great flight, and I'm paying attention. So during the flight, I was like, oh, this fanny pack's kind of bothering me. I'll just stick it right here in my seat beside me, you know, a little, air, little tiny area between seats. And so I, we land, and I look, and sure enough, I was like, okay, I need to make sure that doesn't fall out and hit all the people underneath. So I'm paying attention to that. He hands me my backpack. I'm like, thank you so much. Kind of stop for a second, and I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. So I leave. My girlfriend picks me up, get to the hotel. I'd already checked in digitally. So I'm like, everything's looking great. But I thought, well, let me just stop by the front desk and ask one quick question. He's like, where's your ID? And I'm like, right here. <laughs> Hold on, it's in my backpack. Nope, I called my girlfriend. I was like, I didn't leave a fanny pack. And then all of a sudden, you ever that feeling? You didn't know you missed something until you realized you missed something? All the blood leaves your body, and then you're like, somebody is buying themselves a ticket round trip to Asia right now on my, on my dime. So I called Tim. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I've never left anything on an airplane, let alone the most important things you need, right? Your ID, your credit cards, all the stuff that you need. So I went into, like, okay, get it done mode. So I call Southwest, and I'm like, how easy could this be? It's probably sitting there waiting at the terminal for me. No, it is not that easy. Let me just tell you. So they're like, fill a form out online. So I filled form out online. And then I thought, that's not good enough. I'm going to call somebody else. Somebody else will be able to help me. So I call another person, baggage claim. Nope, fill, another, fill out a form online. I filled out two because I'm like, well, first, person, first one was missed. We're going to do the second one. So I called a friend, and I'm supposed to be at dinner that night. And I'm like, okay, there's no dinner. It is only fasting and praying for me. How do I need to get back home to my family? So, long story short, I told my friends, I'm like, y'all just go ahead without me. I'm grabbing an Uber. I'm like, I've got to get back to the airport, and I've got to find what is missing. So, I get there, and the girl's like, hmm, have you filled a form out? I'm like, sure have. What else can I do? <laughs> we'll go talk to this person. They're like, fill a form out? I'm like, sure have. What's something else I can do? So, I mean, I'm like, bing, 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 all over end up downstairs, you know, in the baggage area. And these girls, they were not the most excited to help me. I will say that. Um, they probably seen people like me desperate, but I'm smiling the whole time. I'm like, girl, look at your nails. Oh, hey, like, never looks so good. You know, <laughs> still was not getting anywhere with that dang bag. And so... Anyway, this other girl heard my desperate plea, and she goes, well, let me check the safe. I'm like, what a great idea. Thank you. No, it wasn't in there. That would have been too easy. So she looks and finally says, well, I see your flight. Because I'm like, do they not clean these planes anymore? I mean, look at all the germs floating around. Surely they are cleaning these planes. Somebody had to have cleaned the plane and found it. And so she said, well, let me check with one guy. She said, well, he won't be back till, you know, close to 7. And I said, that's fine. Just can you call me? And she goes, oh, my gosh, there he goes. Literally, we were down in the basement. There are windows in front of us, and he's on his lunch break walking in front of us. I said, get him, girl, get him, go get him. 
So she runs and um, she talks to him and she goes, hey, well, of course, I follow her because I got to know. And um, she goes, you, have you seen like a black, he said, a black fanny pack with a bag with a shirt in it? And I'm like, yes, that's me. So he finds it and he's like, go upstairs, they'll help you. Well, they were not, we won't go into that story, but they did not want to help me. She did not believe, Brenda did not believe me upstairs. All I, that's all I'm saying. And so I had to convince her that I knew what I was talking about. She goes, Who'd you talk to? I said, he is redhead. He is in the lunchroom. He's eating a sub sandwich right now. I will take you to him. I was like, I need you to go get my bag. So she finally believed me, got somebody, and they got my bag for me. I'm like, woo! I learned my lesson and then only lost it a couple days later, but we'll get into that later. I'm like, I'm never going to do this again. Never going to lose it. You know, sometimes in our marriages and sometimes in life, sometimes we lose things and we don't even realize we've lost them until all of a sudden we get down the road. Or we look back and we're like, man, where's the compassion I used to feel for this person? Where's the kind words that I used to speak to this person? Where's the love that I had in my heart towards this person? The dreams, the goals, all of this stuff, and all of a sudden it is missing and nowhere to be found, and you're in panic mode. You're like, what do I do now? Well, I've got good news for you. Jesus has some words today from Scripture that I want to share with you that we can learn and grow from and change the direction of our marriage, change the direction of our relationships, change the direction of even how we talk to those around us, talk to our parents, talk to our kids, talk to our families, because relationship matters. And marriage matters. And then we're going to talk about how communication is so important. You always have to tell the bad before you tell the good, right? I joked with Tim um, when he's leaving. He's in um, Texas speaking. So say prayer. He's part of Revival Nights. Our friend's church is having. So he's speaking tonight, launching off the Revival Nights. But I joked with him. I said, you always tell horrible stories about me when you're speaking. I said, I'm going to pay you back when it's my turn this week. (laughs) I promise. If y'all want to pay me later, I'll tell you some good stories. But... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my words wisely because communication matters. I'm going to speak kind, kind of him today. Um, one of the verses that always sticks out to me when we talk about communication and Scripture talks about our words and how important things are, it is found in Proverbs. And there's multiple, you know, you can go if you have version, download version. If you don't have it, it is a great resource to have. Um, I love having a physical Bible to write in, to take notes in, but the way to get started, jump started, is download the version, um, and you can look up different versions of the Bible. This is in the Amplified, and it's Proverbs 15.1. We probably have heard it before, but need to be reminded of it quite frequently. A soft and gentle and thoughtful answer turns away wrath. Now, that would be really good if we practiced that 100% of the time, right? <laughs> But, there's that big but, but harsh and painful and careless words stir up anger. How many of you have experienced A and B? (laughs) How many of you have given A and then given B? You're like, I'm going to show Jesus. I just left church and I'm in the parking lot. I'm going to be kind to my family right now for the next 30 minutes. And then something is said and you're like, listen here. (laughs) Listen. Listen. Don't be acting like your father today, okay? (laughs) No, no one in here has ever said that, and I have never said that. I know. Lord, forgive me. Okay. Proverbs 15.1, a soft and gentle and thoughtful. Soft, gentle, thoughtful answer turns away wrath. So many times in our marriage, pride, different things comes in by the words we say, and it starts fires. And then we're just like, oh, yeah, you want to go there? Let me pour a little more gasoline on that one. And unfortunately, we have watched our relationships kind of crumble. We've broken trust. And um, God says harsh, painful, careless words stir up anger. Um, So many times it's so easy to do. The people that you love the most, the people that you care about the most, the person that you vowed to love forever until Jesus comes back, or death do us part is one of the people many times that we take our most frustrations out on. Because they're like, they'll forgive us. They'll get over it. I'm just having a bad day. Have you ever heard this? Well, I'm just a straight shooter. Nobody's laughing because you're like, I said that this morning. I just, I just say it like it is. I'm just a mouth from the south. I mean, I get stuff done. 
right? And we laugh because that's us. That is our human nature. Human nature will take us down a path that is destructive. It destroys those around us. It does not build a great marriage. It does not build a foundational marriage. When we use grievous words, when we use words that are harsh, when we use words that are filled with spite, when we use words that are going to tear down the person in front of us character. But God says we are to use our words as gifts for those. These are a few things, and, you know, you don't have to raise your hand if you resonate with any of these. Um, they're like, you can raise your, um, the person beside you's hand, so that way we'll know who to, who to pray for at this. But here's a few things I just started to write down. As, you know, Tim and I were reflecting over 25 years, things that we have learned in the last 25 years, things of not to do, but don't think you never do these. That's why God gives us the Holy Spirit and he lives in us. So when we, God gave us two ears and one mouth, he's like, slow down. <laughs> slow down, sister. Hey there, dude. You need to think twice before you speak. And he wants us to realize that um, to give life to those around us, to speak life over those around us. And um, these are things that we've learned. And um, we still like, have to check sometimes because we're human. It's ebb and flow. But to have humility and go back and ask for forgiveness. One of the top, um, top seven that are not good, publicly criticizing. Anybody ever do that? You don't have to raise your hand. Like I said, there's no shame. We always say shame of off of you at Momentum Church. Publicly criticizing the person that you vowed to love, honor, and cherish. Being like, oh, look at him. Look at her. Oh. To verbally comparing our spouse maybe to somebody else that you don't appreciate the gifts or the talents that you have sitting right beside you or in the same room with you, but comparing them to say, man, she does not cook like you do. My gosh, you need, to, you need to give my wife that recipe or bring her over for some cooking lessons. I like that, Tim. You're like, mm. You're like that's not good. <laughs> that is not good. And I know it's really quiet, but we've all probably done this at one time or another. Number three, withholding compliments and encouragement. That's just as bad as not even saying it because, well, they don't deserve it. They didn't do A, B, C, so I'm not going to encourage them today. I'm not going to affirm them today. For you never. Has anybody ever said that? You never. You always statements. And most of the time, I will say, this is Tim and I do this all the time. After we say those statements, they're always followed with affirming communication. After... I'm totally kidding. That's not. <laughs> if you're saying it always in a never statement, that is not always followed by affirming communication. Those are words that should not be in our vocabulary because it's not normally 100% of the time. It could be 90% of the time, but it's not always and never. Number five, talking down to our spouse, degrading. We're supposed to be encouragers of those around us. We're supposed to carry the hope of Jesus. If we are hope dealers and hope carriers, we have the light of Christ living in us, why would we tear down our spouse and degrade them in front of others or even at home by ourselves? Number six, nagging. Nagging. Anybody ever nag? <laughs> Trying to trip you guys up. Y'all are good. You're like, mm -mm, no, no. For me, I have found in our relationship, Tim loves nagging. Is the thing that inspires him the most, and I can get the most work done around the house if I nag him. And we all know that I just told a big fat lie here at church because nagging is not something that we love to be on the other side of, and other people don't like to be on the other side of us when we are constantly tap, 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 tap. Proverbs 21:19 says, and he calls us out here. An endless drip, 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 drip <laughs> from a leaking faucet. And the words of a cranky, nagging wife have the same effect. Ladies, I know. Guys, you better be quiet right now because I don't know if the ladies will be able to handle it. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm a jokester, guys. You guys have got to laugh. God says the joy of the Lord is our strength. I mean, we got to laugh about these things. But what I have found that is, you know, God calls us out, especially as women, too, because he probably knows that maybe that's something that we might struggle with. It's might something that we want to be aware of and maybe even have a conversation with our spouse. And this is where you're going to have to get thick skin, get a soft heart but thick skin and say, hey, what's it like on the other side of me? What's it like on the other side? Do you feel like I encourage you or do you feel like I'm that drip, drip, <laughs> drip? 
drip. Nobody likes a dripping faucet, do they? You can hear that wherever you are, and it will not, you're like, I've got to turn that off. I've got to turn that off. But Proverbs says, he says, it is no good to have the words. It's like a dripping faucet, the words of a cranky, nagging wife. He says another version, it's better to live alone than with a quarrelsome, complaining wife. God is wanting us to know our words matter. But we can give life. I've given you the bad news, but on the plus side, there's good news. I have a verse that I want to leave with you, a verse that I want to share with you. We can turn all this around, but we can't turn something around if we don't take inventory and know what we're turning around. We can't turn a blind eye to it and be like, well, that's not me, but I tell you who does have that. Let me, let me, right over here, there is this. God wants us to do inventory of our heart. It's not to shame us. It's not to be like, you're a horrible person. But it's for us to be like, in Psalms, God says, creating me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit in me. He wants us to realize without him, like, we can't do this. And he wants to give us the strength. Ephesians, I love this. Ephesians 4, 29. Never let ugly or hateful words come from your mouth, but instead let your words become beautiful gifts that encourage others. Do this by speaking words of grace to help them. Now, isn't that so much better than a dripping faucet? <laughs> isn't that so much better than complaining? To think that God has given me a gift of my words. God has given me a gift to be able to edify other people, and especially the person that I vowed to love, honor, and cherish till death do us part. To give words, um, gifts of our words to our children, to give gifts of our words to those around us, even in school. Um, I know we have a lot of teenagers in here. We, you know, Tim and I have three teens. Just for you guys, if you guys learn this early, teens can be so cruel with their words, what they say. And if you learn this ahead of time to realize the weight of our words matters. People, you know, we all heard that saying growing up, sticks and stones may break my bones, words will never hurt me. It was a lie. I don't know whoever started that. <laughs> words have such weight to them. And God wants to use our words as beautiful gifts. And what do you like? One thing I've loved is learning is you're like, well, how do I? I just don't feel that way towards that person. That's when you have to start praying and ask God, God, show me the person that I vow to honor, love, and cherish. Show me what you see in them. What may have I taken for granted? What might I have overlooked? What might I have been like, oh, I saw this, this little tiny thing, but over here all of this goodness was happening. God, help me to see them how you see them. Help me to love them how you love them. Change your heart, change your mind. You have to think positive thoughts. You have to start thinking goodness. Get up in the morning and have a gratitude. List 10 things that you love about your family. 10 things you love about the person you're in a relationship with. 10 things you love about the spouse that you honored and cherished. You're like, right now I don't even think I have one that I could give on that list. God will give you more and start thinking about it. And then as you're thinking about that, start speaking about it. Be like, hey, you know what? This morning I was sitting here thinking and I am grateful for X, Y, Z. God, I'm so grateful for there is somebody who would love the life that you have. And are you even grateful that you have this life that God has blessed you with? And are you verbalizing that through gratitude? I know when Tim and I were going through, um, I said we don't talk from a place of perfection, but just through you learn. You know, you both, you come into a relationship with some baggage from, you know, childhood trauma or childhood pain, even, you know, past relationship experiences, and it's a real thing. So if you need help, talk to someone. Don't try to battle this out on your own. We can help guide you and who, like, we have resources for you. But Tim and I um, went to counseling. We went through a marriage couples communication class. You don't want to talk about getting in the nitty gritty. We had this, um, you know, they came out, there was a bunch of us in the room, you know, and most of the time if you're attending couples communication class, it's not because you excel in the area, okay? <laughs> most of the time it's because you're wanting to learn and you're like, okay, we're getting an F. We need to move up in the scale. So they put this like whole mat in the middle of the floor and they're like, who's up first and wants to work out a problem? And I'm like, Oh, no, that is definitely not me. And Tim's like, we will. I'm like, of course we will. He's like, we're leaders. 
And so by the end of it, I'm like, I hate him. No, I didn't. I promise I didn't. But it taught us how to actively listen, not just stand there, yeah, 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 yeah. But are you hearing the person in front of you's heart? Are you hearing what they're saying verbally, but what they're saying with their heart, what they're saying with their emotions? Because many times we judge by like what's coming at them, coming out of them, but what has happened to them, it could be something that's triggered from a trauma of a childhood. It could be something that there, somebody is going through that you don't even know the pain and the weight of what they're going through. And that's why God says to give the gifts of our words with grace. Because you want to receive grace. I want to receive grace. If I'm having a bad day, I'm like, give me all the grace I need. But if you're having a bad day, I'm like, mm, next time. You know, we want to give and we want to receive Give gifts of grace. Be actively listening. Listen to their heart. Like, what are they really trying to say? And a phrase that Tim and I have used that we've learned says, help me understand. This is what I think you're saying. Is this what you're saying to me? And I would like to say we get this 100% of the time, not all the time, but it has helped so much because many times what I'm processing in my mind is completely different what is he's hearing come out of my mouth. And so for you to get on the same page, to be like, okay, you're saying this, I'm hearing that. What is the truth in the center? Another way that we can positively affirm our spouse and those around us, have any of you guys ever taken the love language um, test? Two people? Okay, if you have not, it's a free test. It's a free test, I promise. It's a quick, easy one. Tim loves it when I give him all those, like, you know, tests to take. I'm like, I want to psychoanalyze you a little bit more. Take this test. There's only 100 questions, and I can learn more about you, how I can love you better, babe. And he's like, yeah, right. So this, I promise, this love language test is so easy. It's a quick, if you have not taken this, you can also take it for teenagers. You can take it for your kids. Take it for your spouse. One thing we realize is Tim's top love language is words of affirmation. So, yeah, like somebody else back there too. Like, yes, tell me how amazing I am. Tell them one more time. And um, so, you know, I kind of was like, well, that's not my, really my thing. So I guess I don't have to do that if that's not my thing. You know, he knows how good he is. I don't have to remind him of that. I mean, really, do you really need to hear that? Yes. If you're a words of affirmation person, you're like, yes, I need to hear that over and over and over again. So him and I were talking about this, and he said, you know something? He says, words of affirmation, he said, it's like a bank account. He said, if you go to the bank account and, you know, you make a, with, you know, like a deposit, you're putting money in, that's when you affirm someone. Like, man, I saw you, you know, coaching our kids, you know, flag football team. I saw you out there, you know, giving that, you know, encouraging our kids. I saw you fixing that leaky faucet. You go, babe. You're the most handy-dandy guy around. Let's go. He's not. He would joke if he heard me say that. But um, he, he's, he owns it. But when you say these positive affirming things, it like fills up the bank account. It's like, okay, slip a 20 in, their, their love language tank is getting a little full or the bank account's getting full. So we're like, yes, yes, yes. Well, Tim said, you know, on the opposite side of that, he said, if you're saying hurtful, rude, maybe degrading things, he goes, that's not just not adding to the bank account. It's actually you're taking a huge withdrawal from me. And when he said that, it hit me, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. Because so many times I can be the mouth of the South. I can be just like say it like it is. I'm a straight shooter. And it made me stop and think, am I adding value to this bank account, or am I taking a huge withdrawal and one little penny? I'm putting, taking out 100 but putting a penny in. And any financial planner will tell you that it's not good. <laughs> you need to make more deposits than that. So how can we? How can we do um, make a difference? How can be, we be reminded to be like, okay, I need to think twice. I need to really think about this. I need to be cautious with my words. So how many of you guys like Tic Tacs? One, two. I'm not a huge Tic Tac person. I promise. I am not an ambassador for Tic Tacs yet. Call me Tic Tacs. I'm not going to tell you, hey, I'm an influencer. Use my code. I'll give you 10% off a big box of Tic Tacs. It is nothing like that. It is just, I started looking up and I, I saw these amazing little, I went to an event and I saw these little bottles, boxes of Tic Tacs. And I'm like, I need these. <laughs> I need these in my life. Tic Tacs are fun. You know, you just hear the little. <laughs> so I started looking up Tic Tacs and I'm like, you know, if we're going to be using our words for kind, refreshing words, 
we all need Tic Tacs. A little reminder for how we should speak. So I started looking up Tic Tacs. I think you're going to like this after I say this. You'll be like, I, I did not know this. So this is according to Tic Tac, okay? It's a gentle little refresh. Just a gentle little refresh. I always thought I needed a big refresh. I'm like, I need something more than just one little Tic Tac. <laughs> Tic Tac is always on hand to gently refresh in your mouth whenever, wherever you are and whoever you're with. Each Tic Tac sparks refreshing moments thanks to its delicately coated hundred layers. Who would have thought that there's a hundred layers on a little Tic Tac? Hundred layers of sweet goodness to make sure that your breath is fresh and you are giving those around you a refreshing time as well for a gentle and tasty, fresh sensation that slowly unfolds in your mouth. Somebody say, Tic Tac. <laughs> God wants us to use our words like Tic Tacs. God wants us to be layers of deep so then when we're around people, they'll be like, whew, man, I, why do I feel so ex encouraged when I'm around that person? Our spouse, man, thank you, babe. I've noticed that you've really been taking an effort to affirm me. I've noticed that you noticed that I was doing this. You know, I know we always joke women about he did the dishes and wants a compliment. Give him a compliment. He did the dishes. You didn't have to, right? Come on, guys. That's where you're supposed to shout for it. Like, yes. Just be grateful and thankful. So this is what we're going to do as a reminder, okay? I, I, I did bring this one as tropical adventure, so I brought my tropical adventure ones. So this is what you're going to do. Everybody's going to go home with little Tic Tacs. Now, you cannot shake these at your spouse or those around you, okay? <laughs> you cannot, this is, this is not good. That is not Jesus-like when you're like, hey, have you had a Tic Tac today? This is a little reminder. Refreshing moments are from the Lord. Refreshing moments are from the Lord. So this is what we're going to do, okay? Let me find it here. You go to say something spicy? Pop a Tic Tac. <laughs> Uh-oh, messed my mouth. Hold on, hold on. Go to say something spicy? Got to pop a Tic Tac. You go to start criticizing. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Tic Tac time. It is time for a refreshing, sweet taste. You go to respond out of anger. Guys, you better grab that Tic Tac box. Girls, you better grab that Tic Tac box. Pop those Tic Tacs. You won't even have time to be talking because your mouth's full of Tic Tacs, okay? Go. <laughs> I did these because if I'd chosen the peppermints, my mouth would be on fire. I'd probably be drooling down here right now. You go to say something like, you never, oh, 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 oh hold up, hold up. That, that drip, drop, drip of the faucet, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. I do have a mouthful of Tic Tacs, but at least I'm saying good things now instead of negative bad things. It's a fun reminder, but guys, let's let Jesus use us. Let's let our marriage be a light to those around us. Communication matters. I wrote this down. I know Tim's the master rapper, so this came up mine's as good as it gets, guys. I'm just saying. Words of grace will refresh in your space. And I wanted to remind you, as these Tic Tacs are refreshing your breath and hopefully refreshing those around you because your breath is good, our words are to be gifts to others. Our words are to be refreshing to others. Words of grace will freshen your space. If your space needs to be a little fresher, if your marriage needs to be a little tidied up, being like, man, we've not been kind. I don't even know the last time I've even complimented my spouse. I don't know when's the last time I've said something positive to my kids. I don't know when's the last time I've said something positive to my coworkers. God has placed you where you are for a reason, use it for good. Use your words to be gifts. I'll read our verse to um, us one more time. It's easier to read on this. It says here in Ephesians, never let ugly or hateful words come from your mouth, but instead let your words become beautiful gifts that encourage others. Do this by speaking words of grace to help them. Let's be a help to others. Go ahead and close your eyes and bow your heads. I love being able to share that with you today. Just a quick little making the moments matter. Our words, words of grace will refresh in your space. 
If you say, man, that really kind of hit me today. I feel like I need a few more tic-tac moments <laughs> lately. I need to be reminded that my words matter. I need to be reminded that um, I'm laying a groundwork for our marriage. My f- space needs to be refreshed. I just need to be more aware of the words that are coming out of my mouth. If that's you, just lift your hand. I'm just going to say a prayer over you. God, I just thank you for this time that we got to just learn about the power of our words. God, using our words for life, God, and to help and to encourage those around us, especially those even in our own homes. God, I pray that you will help us to pause in the moments. I pray that you will help us to stop, to listen to you, God, and change the words, change the way we say it, even our nonverbal communication. God, I pray even this week we will see God moments in our relationships. God, I pray that we will see moments where you're like, man, the old, the old person would have done that. But today, the tic-tac moments, the God moments is this over here. And we just thank you for moving in our marriages. Thank you for moving in our relationships. And thank you for um, helping us realize that communication matters. Go ahead and keep your eyes closed and heads bowed. We never like to end a gathering without letting you know that hope has a name and his name is Jesus. And, you know, you can try to work on your marriage and you can try to make things happen. But if you don't have Jesus in the center of it, it's not going to happen. It's not going to work. You need Jesus. Jesus died on a cross for you. He loved you so much. He did that for you. Romans 3.24 says, For all have sinned and are, and are in the need of the glory of God. And that is why Jesus died on the cross for you. He died on the cross for me. John 3.16 in the New Living Translation, which I love, it says this. It says, um, For here is the way that God loved the world. He gave his only son Jesus as a gift. There's another gift. So that now everyone who believes in him will never perish, but experience everlasting life. Jesus wants you to experience everlasting life today. God did not send his son into the world to judge and condemn it, but to be its savior and to rescue us. God wants to rescue you today. We're going to say a prayer. If today you're like, man, I need Jesus We're going to say a prayer, and you're not praying to me. You're going straight to God, but we're going to pray together to give you the courage that you need to say this prayer for the first time, to realize what Jesus did by shedding his blood on the cross for you, dying for you, and coming up out of the grave three days later. And this is just a simple prayer. It's not a magic prayer. This is just a prayer for you to say, God, I need you in my life, and I surrender my life to you. So we'll pray out loud together, church. Say, Dear Jesus, I realize today that you died on the cross for my sin and took the punishment of my sin. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I ask you today to come into my life Take control and make me new. Thank you for this gift of salvation. I receive all that you have for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody can look up here. Well, if today's your day that you have prayed that prayer for the first time, we would love to celebrate with you. We would love for you to raise your hand. If you're a little shy, fill out a card. Bring it back to the... um, I've got volunteer care for next steps right out in the lobby. We would love to connect with you, help you get started on the purpose that God has for your life. So on the count of three, we're going to cheer for you. We're going to champion you. We want you to raise your hand. We have a gift for you. We want to celebrate what God has done in your life today. So on the count of three, church, you ready? Here we go. One, two, and three. Let's go. Ma'am. It never gets old, people giving their life to Christ week in and week out. If you have chosen Jesus, on the chat right now, I want you to type in, Jesus made me new. We want to connect with you. Well, guys, it has been a fun day. I still have the Tic Tacs in my mouth. I'm still keeping it fresh. So remember this week, grab a Tic Tac, 
and let Jesus use your words full of grace. Have a great week. Pastor Tim has a message for you.